Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our December virtual book party. We are excited to share our favorite books of 2020 with you. Um, if this is your first time joining us, our book parties are a lot of fun, I think. Um, essentially, what we are going to do is try to talk about as many books as we can within the next hour. We've given ourselves a little bit longer this evening because we have more books than usual. We also have more people here talking than usual. There will be um, 10 of us from the library who are talking about our books this evening. And essentially we have about a minute to a minute and 15 seconds to tell you about these books. We do have a pretty wide range of books, everything from middle grade books for kids all the way up through adult books. Um, and we have some chances for some prizes. If you are just joining us, I will just mention again that there is, a, we do have a closed captioning option this evening. If you go to the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see a CC button where you can turn the closed captions on and off. If you would find those beneficial, I would encourage you to turn those on. Um, the main thing to note is that they are auto-generated by the computer, and so sometimes they miss what we're saying. So just know that. We are, will get started. First, Lauren, if you wanna go to the next slide. So we have a couple of drawings that we will be doing this evening. Um, the first drawing, you actually need to be present at the end of the presentation to win. So if you stick around with us, we will have the chance for five people to um, win one of the books that we talk about tonight, the book of your choice. So if your name is selected for that one, I will send you a link to the form in the chat and um, have you fill that out, you choose the book, and we will purchase that book for you and either send it to you or let you pick it up at one of our libraries. Um, so we think that's pretty exciting. You get to pick one of the ones immediately that we talk about. And then the other drawing will happen Thursday morning. That is our ARC giveaway. ARCs are advanced review copies of books that libraries get lots of. We have a bunches of them. We want to give some of them away to you. These books cannot be sold or can't be resold or added to our collection. So we like to share them with folks. And so we are going to be doing drawings. You should have gotten the uh, link for that drawing in your email that I sent with the link to the webinar. So there's still time to fill that one out uh, before Thursday morning. That's the cutoff. If you haven't filled it out by Thursday morning, you <laughs> will miss the chance for that drawing. Um, I will just give a disclaimer that if you're here and you're a library staff member, we're super excited that you've joined us this evening. You are not eligible for the drawing that we're doing tonight, but you can fill out the form for the ARC giveaway if you would like to participate in that one. Um, so that's a bit of housekeeping. So stick around at the end and we will do our drawing for the new books that we'll be sending out. And then you'll be notified on Thursday morning if you're one of the winners of our ARC giveaway. So I'm just gonna really quickly, um, it occurs to me that since I am the speaker, they won't be able to see y'all. So I'm gonna call on you and have you unmute to introduce yourself. I'll do it that way. Um, and so we'll introduce who we have with us this evening, and then we will jump right into our book talking from there. So I'm gonna go Bridget first. Hi, I'm Bridget. I'm one of the teen librarians with the district. And then Allison, you're next on my screen. Hey, I'm Allison. I'm an adult advisory librarian. And then Pamela. Hello, I'm Pamela Halloran, one of the, the other adult advisory librarian tonight. Lauren. I'm Lauren. I'm one of the other teen librarians. And Dagmar. I am Dagmar Corin, and I work at the Smoky Library as a library specialist. And then I have Katie. Hey everyone, I'm Katie and I work on the website. And then Alice. Hi, I'm Alice Kober and I buy adult fiction for the library district. And then last we have Mary. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm one of the early literacy librarians. So I normally work with very young children, but today I will be book talking some YA and some middle grade. And then 
I didn't introduce myself. My name is Catherine. I am the third teen librarian for the district. Um, Dax was supposed to book talk with us this evening, but was not able to join us. So I will be attempting to book talk Dax's books. Um, Dax works at the South Glen Library. All right, so we will jump right into the first book talk with Alice. Hi, my first book is Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin. And I included this book because of the excellent dark humor. It's one of the few books that actually made me laugh out loud during COVID. Most of the action in Squeeze Me takes place at a ritzy Palm Beach country club inhabited by very wealthy Florida Republicans. The main character is Angie Armstrong, a wildlife control specialist who is generally sympathetic, although she did go to prison for feeding a poacher's hand to an alligator. The dark humor also includes incompetent low-life criminals, a tanning bed disaster, and giant Burmese pythons on LSD. It's lots of outrageous fun. So my first book is The Bone Chard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. It's the first in an adult fantasy series. It has great world building. The whole thing is set on floating islands. Um, unfortunately, those islands can also sink, which factors into the story. There's a lot of diverse ethnic groups in the book, and the book also has a lot of Asian influences. It's a great cast of characters from all the different islands are very different, and it's really well done in a full cast audio. Um, and especially it features a little animal called Mephi that no one's ever seen before. He is learning to talk and he is amazing in his relationship to his, the human who found him. It would give um, Dobby or Baby Yoda a run for his money. And you should read this book for Mephi alone. There we go. So Seven Deadly Shadows was one of my very favorites this year. It's YA geared toward teenagers. And I really enjoyed it because of the world building, which is fantastic. It follows Kira, who's a teenager who works in a temple that has been in her family for generations in Japan. And her grandfather and Kira both see sort of yokai, which are these spirit otherworldly creatures, spirit world creatures, sort of ghosts, if you want to think of them that way. And at the beginning of the book, something happens to her grandfather. Um, terrible things happen. And Kira is left kind of responsible for the temple. And she discovers that this evil sort of spirit, this demon king, is planning to rise and bring about the apocalypse. And this is the story of her trying to kind of combat that. She teams up with a kitsune. If you aren't familiar, they're sort of a fox spirit-esque creature. Um, and the, what I loved about it, aside from the characters, is all of the details about Japanese folklore and mythology and religion and history. Just really beautifully written, plenty of humor. It's a little bit gory, a little bit horror, a lot of supernatural, but very fun. I realized I forgot to mention what the All-Stars were. All-Stars are books that multiple librarians have read and enjoyed, and also books that we have featured at other book parties this year. So these are like the favorite of the favorite books. Um, I don't guarantee that they're the best literature, but they are our absolute favorite books that we read this year. So yes, <laughs> um, House of the Cerulean Sea is like a book that is a warm hug. If you're looking for some comfort food for the, your reading soul, it was one of the most delightful books I read this year. It follows Linus Baker, who is a caseworker for the department in charge of magical children. And he is sent by the extremely upper management to investigate an orphanage full of what are considered very dangerous children. There is a were Pomeranian, a gnome, um, the Antichrist, and many others. And it is so delightful. The characters in this story are really what make it wonderful. I highly recommend it if you're looking for something that will make you feel happy and make you laugh an awful lot. If you're looking for an uncomplicated, heartwarming, funny, and feel-good story, then this is your book, The Switch by Beth O'Leary. I looked for such story stories this year, and this was by far the best one. The main characters are Eileen and Lena. Eileen is Lena's grandmother, lives in a small Yorkshire village, and suddenly finds herself in a new life situation. Lena lives in London, 
has a seemingly great career, but unfortunately has some emotional issues she's not dealing with very well. So her boss asks her to take a two month sabbatical. Lena goes to visit her grandma and eventually they decide to switch places. That's how grandma Eileen ends up in London. It's such an enjoyable read. There are many endearing secondary characters and I laughed out loud so many times throughout the book. I highly recommend the audio, which is performed by two excellent narrators who truly bring the characters of Eileen and Lena to life. All right, Cemetery Boys was one that Dax was going to book talk. I did actually book talk this one at an earlier book party. Again, one of my favorite books this year. Um, the main character of the story is a brujo. He's a trans brujo who has been um, essentially rejected by his family. He is dreaming of joining their um, group, but they have not allowed him. They don't believe that he can actually perform the magics that are necessary. He decides to prove them wrong. Part of the ceremony to be initiated as a brujo is to summon a ghost. He manages to summon Julian, but now he can't get Julian the ghost to go away. And Julian um, doesn't believe he's actually dead, doesn't believe he's a ghost. It's an excellent, wonderful, wonderful story if you like. A bit of supernatural, but really it's more a story about the family. Um, I highly recommend it. So one of my favorite books this year was Anxious People. And let's just say this book has a little bit of everything and lots of surprises you wouldn't expect. So a bank robber who does a very terrible job of robbing a bank flees and takes a group of strangers hostage. These strangers are at a home showing. So um, what I love the most about this book is seeing how the group of strangers stories align with a bank robber and how all of the pieces come together it's the kind of book that you want your friends to read alongside with you so you can talk about all of the crazy and interesting things that are happening. And it's the kind of book that's going to make you laugh and cry and actually want to purchase a book that you got at the library. So I Killed Zoe Spanos is by far my favorite book this year, and it's a young adult, definitely crossover interest for adult um, thriller suspense story about Anna. She is just starting her job as a nanny uh, for the summer, and when she's like learning the community and going around, she's realizing that people are watching her more and like calling her Zoe, and she's really confused. So she finally asks somebody, like, who's this Zoe person? And it turns out Zoe was killed almost a year ago and her boyfriend is in jail for it. Um, but as she digs, it turns out that not everyone believes it's her brother, especially, or her boyfriend, especially her boyfriend's sister who has a podcast and is doing all this research. And so she kind of starts joining her and looking it up because she looks just like Zoe and she's very, has this connection to her as soon as she sees her. And so it definitely gets really twisty as she starts digging more. I love the audiobook. It sounds like a podcast when it's a podcast, it has this recording to it that changes. Um, it just really you feel like you're investigating with her and you have to figure it out you don't want to put it down until you figure out what is going on so that's i killed zoe spanos my first book is miss meteor by taylor k mejia and Anne marie macklemore uh, i was actually surprised i didn't hear more about this book uh, this year because i absolutely loved it um, if you have read dumplin or seen the netflix show dumplin you will absolutely love this book because it's a different take on beauty pageant life in the town of meteor or meteorite depending on who you talk to in new mexico the annual miss meteor pageant is a big deal but there's never been a Miss Meteor who looks like Lita Perez or Chiqui Quintanilla. When Chiqui decides to upset the status quo by encouraging her ex-best friend Lita to enter, things get a little complicated. Lita is trying to figure out her place in a world she feels she's slowly slipping out of, and Chiqui is also trying to figure out her identity as a pan Latinx woman in a small town. It includes a trans character as well, and this warm story highlights the importance of true friendship and the people who help us figure out how to take up space in a world that sometimes wants to shut us out. Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I'm not the only one who likes this book. It's appeared on several best of lists already. You may have seen it. In 
1580s England, Agnes moves to Stratford with her husband. She is sought after by the townspeople for her healing abilities. They have three children, including twins Hamnet and Judith. Tragically, Hamnet dies in 1596 at age 11, probably from the plague. And just as a little aside, the author follows and imagines the journey of the plague from Egypt to England by following the travels of a flea. She's very imaginative. Uh, four years after their son's death, her, her husband writes the play Hamlet. Yes, this is the story, a story of Anne Hathaway, also known as Agnes, and her husband William Shakespeare and their family. It's the story of a marriage and how a family tragedy can affect everyone around them. Ultimately, it's Agnes's story. It's beautifully write, written, it's a beautiful book, and I'm very glad Anne Hathaway's story has been told. Hi, my next book is To Tell the Truth by Jilly McMillan. Uh, it's about an author named Lucy Harper, who is a best-selling London author, making tons of money with her mystery series, featuring Detective Sergeant Eliza Gray. Like many writers, Lucy has a very vivid imagination, but she does take it one step farther than most. Lucy has an imaginary friend, Eliza, yeah, the same name as the detective in the mystery series, and she communicates constantly in her head with Eliza, and sometimes she talks to her out loud, which puzzles people around her. But everything seems to be going smoothly in Lucy's life until her husband, Dan, buys an enormous mansion in the country without telling Lucy. Lucy loves London and doesn't want to move, and the couple argues. Then a few days later, Dan disappears. Does Lucy know where he is gone? Does Eliza? This is a compelling psychological suspense novel with a terrific, unreliable narrator. Okay, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Um, this is pandemic fiction. It's set in Dublin during the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918, and it focuses on a nurse there who's working on the maternity ward with patients who have both the Spanish flu and are pregnant. And I had talked about this in an earlier book party, but the reason um, I included it now is it wasn't the intention of the book, but it really is an amazing tribute to healthcare workers, most especially nurses, who have always been there to care for us. And this book really will tell you that again and again. This one is nonfiction. Me and Patsy Kicking Up Dust is by Loretta Lynn. And I picked it up this summer because I don't know if any of you were familiar, there was a podcast that came out earlier this year, Dolly Parton's America, about Dolly Parton, surprise. And Dolly Parton actually wrote the introduction for this book. And this is the story, this is Loretta Lynn writing about her friendship with Patsy Cline, but also about her life, how she got into music, how Patsy's career went in music, what it was like to be in Nashville in the 60s. She talks about family, her husband, relationships. It is so interesting, so compelling, and the audiobook is wonderful. It is read by the reader, has this sort of slight country twang to, to her voice, and it really gives does justice to the conversational feel of this book. You just feel like you are sitting down with Loretta Lynn and she is telling you secrets. And it is so engaging and interesting. I really loved it. It made me want to go listen to all the songs she talks about as well. So highly recommend. So I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder very early this year, and it stuck with me throughout the entire year. It's one of my favorites. If you are a fan 
of Veronica Mars, or if you enjoyed the book Sadie, I highly recommend this book. In particular, I highly recommend the audiobook um, because it is a full cast narration. It has dramatized bits in it, um, and it is so good. It is one of those mysteries that you really do have to try to read in one sitting um, because it is so compelling that you need to know what happens. Um, so this is a YA book that follows um, Pippa, who has decided for her senior project that she is going to investigate a cold case murder-suicide that happened in her town five years ago. And what she discovers as she starts to uncover bits and pieces of the truth is that it may not be as cut and dried as everyone thinks, that the young man who was accused of murdering the, young, the girl and then committing suicide may have in fact been murdered as well. Uh, I highly recommend it. Again, so many twists and turns, it will keep you guessing. The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. If you want to lose yourself in a sci-fi novel for a bit, this is a great choice for you. It's been recommended for readers of Handmaid's Tale and Red Rising, but it definitely has its own voice. It's a debut novel and several of the characters are queer. There are Leto and Hero, who are highly trained soldiers of the Ikari Society, and then there is the priestess of the Gaian Society, the First Sister. Their stories are told separately from their own point of view, and then they converge in the end in a surprising conclusion. And because this is a space opera, there are many secondary characters that play a major role in the events of the story. To give the best review possible, I am going to borrow words directly from the wonderful author, Lyndon A. Lewis. The First Sister is a book about finding your voice and choosing your loyalty. A story about people who realize their society is broken and have to decide what to do about it. A tale about oppressed people who struggle to survive in a universe that thinks less of them for one, re for, excuse me, for one reason or another. All right, I'll Be the One is a young adult novel, again, that is just about as joyful as that bright, happy cover <laughs> leads you to imagine. I smiled through the entire book. I highly recommend the audio book. Um, it is the story of this young woman who dreams of being a K-pop star. So if you are fans of BTS um, or <laughs> any of the other big K-pop bands, they feature heavily in this book as well. Um, but it is just this joyful examination of what it takes. She decides she's going to try out for this reality show to be both a singer and dancer and a new K-pop group that is being put together. Um, and it's her experience uh, of going through that. It is so much fun, uh, makes you kind of laugh and smile. I highly recommend it. I'm not doing Dax's books complete justice, but <laughs> they are really great. All right, my next book is for all of you fans of Rebecca and Jane Eyre. We have the remote manor house, we have the Cornwall setting, a governess, it's set by the sea, and we have an enigmatic captain who has a dark side. Um, and there's also this beautiful mirror and a set of twins. So we have all kinds of these little gothic uh, undertones to the novel. And if you like dual storylines, there's a secondary storyline about an art curator who finds out that she um, has inherited this beautiful hall on the Cornish coast. So she ends up tracing her heritage and the mysterious legacy of the decaying manor and the once prominent de Grey family that used to live there. So it's a slow burn with gorgeous atmospheric writing and some spine chilling moments that I just loved. Ray Bear is a young adult fantasy, but I would say definitely sixth graders would enjoy it as well. Um, but it's about Tara Sai, and she has been raised in isolation, only seeing her mother very rarely. And it turns out her mom is pretty important to the community. She's called the lady. And she has this idea that she's going to send uh, Tara Sai to the capital to compete for a very rare spot in the Crown Prince's Council of Eleven. These people, if they're chosen, are bound by what they call the Ray. Um, there's 
amazing world building, but the ray is even higher bond than blood. It's this really close knit group. Uh, and when she gets there, she is very interested in all the different people. Like I said, she was raised in isolation. So now she has this connection with others and she's really unsure um, what she's supposed to do, but she gets this kind of magical dream uh, from the lady that she is supposed to kill the crown prince once she gets his trust. That's not a spoiler, that's like right up front. And so it's her struggle trying to figure out whether she should appease her mother or if she should go with the life that she's starting to really enjoy. So there's this dynamic uh, within herself, but the world building, the strong characters, I just, I truly love this and can't wait for the second one. Okay, From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks is definitely uh, a middle grade book, which generally means it's for upper elementary kids, but and also into into middle school. So a sixth grader would probably enjoy this story. Um, all Zoe Washington wants to do this summer is focus on her internship at a friend's bakery and learn enough to audition for the Kids Baking Challenge on Food Network. But her plans are upset when she receives a letter from her biological father, who is in prison. Her mother doesn't talk much about her dad. And while Zoe knew he was in prison, she doesn't know much about why, because her mother hasn't ever let her write to him. She begins a secret correspondence with him and subs subsequently learns that he's in prison for murder, but maintains his innocence. She begins to feel a connection with him that leads her to start questioning what she's been told about him and the criminal justice system that put him in prison. This is a timely read that will engage upper elementary readers with its gripping story and flawed characters. This would be a great read for fans of Renee Watson, Celia C. Perez, or Kate Messner's books. I don't know if you can see me smiling or shaking my head. I shake my head in amazement whenever I think of this book, Hench by Natalie Walshots. It's so clever and creative. Hench refers to hench men or women who assist people by doing their dirty work. Anna is a temporary hench when her current evil boss appears at a press conference, superheroes show up too, and there are of course consequences. After all, there's usually collateral damage when superheroes try to save the world. Anna is then hired by the worst supervillain of all, and away we go. This is a book which looks at good and evil and villainy and heroism and the overlapping shades of gray in between. Give this a try, even if you've never read a superhero comic book and never intend to. It's big fun. Okay, so this is A Cat's Tale, um, A Journey Through Feline History by um, Bob of the Cat. Um, and this is the best combination of meticulously researched history, um, cat snobbery, and humor that you will ever find. It really is the story of our relationship with cats from um, prehistoric times through the present. And despite I included two images here, but um, there are also, there's so many illustrations in the book and a lot of them are real, like news clippings and statues of famous cats and things like that. Um, you, you just have to laugh, you have to enjoy it, and yet you learn so much about us as humans as well as about cats. The audiobook is great. It's narrated by a very snobby sounding woman um, acting and reading as Baba the Cat. Um, but make sure you can do the, um, get to see the illustrations. It's the perfect gift for any cat lovers, although apparently it's selling out a lot of places right now. So that's a, a cat's tale. I love that cover. This book is like the exact opposite of the book Allison just talked about, but this is this is sort of one of those books of my heart. This is one of our all-stars. If you have talked to me at all this year, I have told you about this book. I have told strangers on the street about this book. I've told everyone because I loved it so much. It is the tagline on the cover says something like lesbian necromancers in space. And that's fairly accurate. It is it's a sci-fi book about necromancers with swords and fighting, but it's also a locked room murder mystery. And it's also an incredibly sharp and witty and funny story with a, an amazing protagonist. And it's gory and weird. There's body horror and humor and 
mystery things. I don't know. I love found family. And this book is about found family at the heart of everything. So it has all of these other things and you get swept up in the sword fights and then you get like punched right in the feels. And it just is amazing. The sequel, Harrow the Ninth, came out this summer. I read that. It is like a sharp left turn from this book. It is so different, but also incredibly good. And the third in the series, there supposed to be three. The third will be out next year. It is called Electo the Ninth. I literally cannot wait. I am so excited. It is very different from anything I've ever read. Please read it. Come talk with me about it because I'm bothering everyone else about it. So I would be delighted to hear if you liked it too. Land of the Cranes is a middle grade book geared toward um, definitely probably like fourth through sixth grade, but I would argue that um, it is such a wonderfully written book that anyone of any age can enjoy this. Um, I say enjoy with a caveat. It is probably the hardest book I read this year. Um, it is a novel written in verse by Aida Salazar, and it is about the detainment facilities at our borders. Um, it is the story of Batita and her mother, who are separated from her father when he is deported from their home in Los Angeles by ICE. And when they are going to visit him one day at the border, um, they are detained and put into one of the detention, detention facilities outside of LA. Um, Batita's mother is pregnant and the conditions are stark and really just terrible in these detention facilities. This is their story of trying to find hope and light in this bleak and dark situation um, and trying to figure out if their family will ever be reunited. Um, I will say that it is, again, I'll just reiterate, it's probably the hardest book that I read this year, but it is so beautiful um, and very timely. It's called Land of the Cranes, sorry. Oh, me again, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then this last series, this is an adult series. If you haven't discovered Sonali Dev's Rajas series, they are all retellings of Jane Austen with some definite twists. Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors is the first in the series, and it is a gender-swapped retelling of Pride and Prejudice that will make you so hungry because the one of the main characters is a chef and the descriptions of the food are just divine um and so you'll your mouth will be watering i will say it is also much steamier than jane austen um, so be prepared for that going in um, there are not the longing glances to the side it progresses a little further than that but it is such a delightful series it follows this very interesting eclectic indian royalty family who now lives here in the united states um, so the first pride prejudice and other flavors the second is a retelling of persuasion All right, so my next book is 21 Truths About Love, and in this book, you're going to meet Dan. Dan is having a hard year, not quite so much a pandemic level year, but a hard year nonetheless. His bookstore is struggling financially. His wife wants a baby. Babies are very expensive, and Dan has not told his wife how bad the bookstore is doing because he loves her that much and is trying to protect her from bad news. So Dan, who is a prolific list writer, starts planning this um, absolutely ridiculous and quite possibly illegal solution that can't possibly work, or can it? So just like in Anxious People, I laughed, I cried, I forced my family to listen to parts of this because I had to read it out loud because of how funny it is. And when's the last time you've read a book that's written in lists? trying to unmute and I skipped myself, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna talk about Star Daughter. I really enjoyed this one. It's another young adult. I would say sixth grade would probably enjoy it as well, seventh grade. Um, there's just a little bit of language, but it's a fantasy mixed with mythology. And Chital has been hiding a huge part of who she is. She's 
almost 17 and she is part star. Her mother is actually from a constellation called uh, Pushia and she was called back to her constellation after giving birth. Now that Chital's almost 17, she has this feeling of the star song that is pulling her kind of towards the sky. And she has to hide that she has this because it can call, cause different effects um, around her, but it gets to the point that she can't hold it back anymore and she is called to the sky and you do hear what happens. But once she's up there, there's something really important that's about to happen. There's this competition and that's when this mythology starts to take place and you get to see the different types of things that are happening among these constellations. There's definitely like this clash feeling and there's just a lot happening in this this other level of the world uh, essentially. Uh, so if you enjoy world building, it really builds up. Um, it is the first in a series and I super enjoyed it. It's beautifully described and written. So that is Star Daughter. All right, I have another middle grade book for you, and this is a bit different than the last one I recommended. Um, this is an action-packed story, and it's filled with magic, friendship, and um, talking to animals. <laughs> and it's perfect for fans of the Rick Riordan uh, Presents imprint, and anyone who read Ghost Squad by um, Clara Bell Ortega in the last year, uh, I think they would enjoy this as well. But it will also appeal to anyone who likes animal or magic stories. Nestor Lopez has just moved with his mom into his grandmother's house, the most recent in a series of moves he's made over his life due to his father's deployments. He intends to lay low and definitely not tell anyone about his ability to talk to animals. Uh, but much to his surprise, he finds himself making human friends. And he's definitely not going to, or he's definitely is going to need them when the animals start going missing in the forest by his house. And his abuela is accused of being the cause. Nestor and his friends think it's actually something else. A tule vieja, which is a witch that can absorb an animal's powers through a bite during eclipse. Will they be able to stop the witch before the next eclipse? Dun, dun, dun. I'm ending tonight's book talks with the book we all need right now, Leonard and Hungry Paul. Ronan Hessian, the author, is from Ireland. He published this book last year in the UK, and it finally made its way here to the US this year. And this was certainly one of the best things to happen in 2020. Leonard and Hungry Paul are each 30-something young men. They work and live their quiet lives in the homes where they grew up. They're nice men. Their lives uh, don't seem to contain much drama, just the drama of everyday life. Hungry Paul's sister is getting married. Leonard starts a relationship with a single mother who works at the same office that he does. And it's gently humorous. Here's the opening sentence. Leonard was raised by his mother alone with cheerfully concealed difficulty, his father having died tragically during childbirth. This book is about friendship, living in the moment, being true to who you are. It's a lovely, quiet, and soothing story, which is perfect for right now. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>